Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I hope to expand my Minmus station because it seems like we're going to be doing most of our carbonite mining operations there rather than on the moon and so having a more uh, more fully functional station would be best especially since right now we don't even have Kerbals there so we need to uh, send some Kerbals over we need to expand the life support system and especially we need a larger fuel tank uh, right now we have very small fuel tanks on that station and if we're going to send a large uh, carbonite mining operation there we need somewhere to store the fuel so that's going to be a main thing in this uh, launch but I also want to test a new variant on the Maximus and I'll talk about that in a sec but I think I'm going to pass on this particular asteroid now this is the one that's going to be for our contract which is to place a class C asteroid around Minmus uh, this is a class E that I was originally intending on tackling, but I think it'll be it'll make more sense to aim for a class E after we do the class C. Otherwise, uh, trying to tackle a class C would seem to be, uh, um, well, it wouldn't be quite as impressive, right? So, yeah, I'm going to pass on that one. I don't think I'm going to be transferring the, the Explorer X to Jewel directly, which is what this indicated. So I'll pass on that as well. Uh, the options for the Explorer X are going to be probably we're just gonna bring it back to Kerbin first and then and then fill it up fill it up uh, perhaps refit it uh, we'll see what we can do with that at a later date but uh, for now uh, we will aim for Minmus operations leading up to placing this asteroid into orbit around Minmus okay so let me show you what we've got from top to bottom uh, first of all, we've got two separate modules that we're going to add to the Minmus station. First of all is this top one, which uh, contains inner products module, uh, agricultural module here, uh, RCS tank, and uh, full life support. So plenty of life support containers, as well as a water purifier and a carbon extractor. Okay, so that's going to be a very fully functional life support system. We've already got the machinery in here. And then on the opposite side, we are going to place this module, which will have compost for the aeroponics module. It will have this fuel tank, which as I said, we're going to be using as a fuel tank for the station so that it can conduct its operations and it'll be filling this tank up. We've got little thrusters so that we can use this to get into orbit around Minmus and maneuver towards the station. So it will maneuver everything towards the station first and then this top part will separate so that it can dock with the opposite side. So we'll try and balance it out because uh, now uh, this will allow us to have one new module on each side of the station. We're not adding these to the end of the station which I envision to be the docking place for a large carbonite transport uh, ship. Okay. Uh, now we have the typical second stage of the Maximus, except now it is a third stage. Uh, let's seal up the top for now. Okay, rather tall payload as usual. Uh, it is the third stage because now we have this odd looking stage, and this is this new second stage that gives us an extra 1000 meters per second, and that means that the main Maximus stage no longer gets to orbit. So it falls short of orbit, and this brings the rest of the payload to orbit and as you can see it's got a single mainsail and LVT-30s. Uh, it is meant to be recoverable as well, it's got its parachutes on top uh, ringing around a, uh, a advanced SAS unit as well as actually that uh, interestingly I think this this controller is placed wrong, hold on oh no it's not on the wrong note, it's just that the parachutes are taller than the advanced SAS unit, okay all right, no problem there. So this also has its own little reserve tank, which I need to lock up. Let's make sure that we've got the right numbers here. Okay, now it's locked up. So it's about uh, 893 meters per second there. And um, it has these tanks here as well. But then these uh, extend. And then we have our landing situation here not the greatest sort of thing and we definitely need to shift this fuel down but uh, definitely this portion should be heavier than whatever's up here and then the Maximus except the Maximus now has an extra uh, reserve tank mainly because it needed extra engines and so what this is is now basically 
uh, the the overweight brother of the Falcon 9. Uh, uh, obviously, nine engines now at the bottom here, and so nine mainsails, plenty of uh, sea level thrust to weight ratio, uh, plenty of thrust to weight ratio, period. And that is intentional. No more need for SRBs. Thank you very much. Yeah, so no more SRBs. We have the thrust. In fact, we can probably extend most of these stages further than they are right now. The second stage will look a lot better once we are on our way, and you'll, you'll see what it looks like when it's attached to the rest of it. I think it'll look right. Uh, right now, it looks a little bit awkward, that silver portion, but it'll make more sense once you see it in flight, I think. It's a little bit daunting, and we are sending Kerbals atop it, which is even more daunting, but we've got to do it. So, uh... I like the sound of Kirstead and Mitrick for some reason. Okay, yeah, Kirstead and Mitrick will be our two Kerbals for this mission. We're gonna have to hire more Kerbals. Alright, so there we have it. Let's take her out to launch pad and see how it goes. So with the second stage, the Maximus is now looking much more like a normal rocket. Uh, you can see this this entire thing is the second stage and extends it quite a lot. Uh, makes it look a lot less fat. But still, not quite as slender as the Falcon 9, certainly. Now, let me just double check that my base tank is locked. Oh, it isn't. Should know. Okay, well, I don't know how much Delta V we... I, I don't even know if the second stage is capable of getting into orbit. We'll have to see. We've got a lot of thrust, and for those who typically get into orbit around Kerbin with FAR installed with less than 3,500 meters per second, well, that's typically because... Why do we have less mod propellant than we should... Oh, okay, those. Right. Um, anyway, uh, that's typically because you got a high thrust-to-weight ratio, and that's what we have here. So, uh, throttle is up, SAS is on, uh, we're going to have to prepare guidance. And all right, Kirsten and Metric, here we go. Ooh, <laughs> that took the program a second to figure out. So obviously, we're we are relying on FMRS for the first stage this time. So I'm gonna be doing quite a quite a pitch maneuver here, and I should probably tone down the thrust because the engines are so close together they're gonna overheat. Under FAR it's not like in stock. In stock you're going to limit your your speed to uh, to the terminal velocity but uh, you don't need to do that with FAR. You need to limit it to whatever deadly reentry tells you to limit that or FAR has its aerodynamic failures of course. I wanted to check the pricing for the Maximus 5's, 5's first stage. Uh, the Maximus 5 uh, has some weird pricing on that first stage, uh, given what we saw last time. Uh, I forgot to do that. I meant to. So you can see quite an expedited launch here. No slow stuff this time. Kerstead is looking frantic. Yep, so far so good. The key thing is of course the tall payload not uh, wiggling about. And we're already at a pretty high acceleration so if it's not gonna wiggle now I think it'll be alright. So the capacity for this launcher is 70 tons to the moon, probably a little bit less than that to Minmus, and actually what we've got is 68 tons, but we've got thrusters on the payload to help us out on that, just in case. So we've got the Rockamax 2477s, in order to make sure that we can get into orbit around Minmus and everything. 
Okay, some additional overheating here. I think I, sh I can throttle back. We're doing quite all right on, on acceleration here. Oh, I did install trajectories. I tried to take out Hall Camera VDS in order to make space for trajectories. But uh, unfortunately, I think uh, there are some craft that have Hall Camera VDS parts on. So I only deleted the parts that I could delete. Um, the half move, for some reason, has a part and anyway, I had to restore a uh, uh, save uh, made immediately after the previous episode. So, uh, because I got that warning where the crafts weren't loading because the parts were missing. So, so yeah, just for you to know, uh, parts of Hall Camera VDS are out, and otherwise, we've got we've got trajectories in. I'm gonna take it to 120, I think, and then let it go. Okay, we'll reserve the rest of the fuel. We probably need it. Okay, so with that, I think uh, we'll have to trust FMRS here. Okay, set. Okay. And we can ignite these engines. And I think we can actually separate fairings now. Would be a good time to do that. Okay. We have some time to apoapsis, so we can wait. Um, so actually with the fairings on, it, uh, the bomb of this made a lot more sense, but uh, you can see how it looks right now. With the fairings on, it's actually very smooth. Okay, center engine out. Remember, these guys have their own little tanks. Well, looks like we'll get into orbit. Let's cut out there. Okay. Uh, let's keep it attached to the mission while we handle this portion. Um, let me quick save. This is a rare case where I, I think quick saving is a good idea. We've got kerbals and everything. Oh, it's auto saving as well. That's nice. Okay, so uh, let us go back to our... How is electric charge? Electric charge is depleting. But we don't have extendable solar panels, but we got these. We really should just rotate the craft, but I think we've got enough time. Let's go back to the first stage. And that's when the game crashed. Let's take a look at what we've got going here. Okay, FMRS is not automatically jumping us to our our descending first stage. So I'm getting the feeling that that's just gone. We highlight debris. We see it's there. I guess we could follow it still, right? Uh, focus. Is that the right debris though? Well, let's see. Well, no, this is not the right debris. This is the right debris though. Um. So yeah, actually we don't need FMRS, do we? Because this gets so high that it's still on the way down while the mission gets to orbit. Uh-oh, this reserve tank was emptied. I didn't expect that. I thought that would not be... Oh, but this still has fuel at least. It's, it's, it's good. Okay. Uh, 500 meters per second without this tank. How much is it with? 938. All right. I think we can work with that. Uh, let's see now. Surface speed is increasing quickly. Uh, the DV the difference between surface velocity and orbital velocity is too big to try and let Smart ASS just go retrograde. So lots of questions here. Um, obviously, we are going to face heating. 
and then we have to be able to release the parachutes in time. We seem to be overshooting this peninsula by quite a lot. I don't think it's possible to actually land on it. And the only successful time we've retrieved the first stage of the Maximus was in the water. So actually it might be better just to land it in the water. We're not trying to hit the KSC, obviously. And uh, that's not a problem since we found out that uh, the first stage of the Maximus doesn't cost that much. At least apparently not, though there seems to be some discrepancy going on there. But of course we have added four extra mainsails. Well, uh, let me not use any thrust here. Let me monitor temperature though. Make sure nothing gets too hot. Okay, it's peaked out and going down. I didn't hear anything blow up. G-force is still going up and we're beginning to rotate actually. I think it's something about the way the mainsails are fitted on. We're rotating more and that's probably because there's more mainsails or maybe it's just the angle that we're coming into the atmosphere. Uh, I hope F, uh, Fair Mirror Space does not have an issue with this. I think it was just the way that the bottom tanks had been placed that was the problem before. Okay, I'm gonna seriously attempt to slow down here. Okay, parachutes. SAS off. Landing gear down. Still det descending too quickly here. We'll need to decelerate before the parachutes try to open. Otherwise they might jerk the thing apart. Okay, full parachute. To oh, we're going down too fast. Okay, let's not go up though. Uh, okay, so 13 meters per second or so. Wiggling a bit. We're gonna need to use some of this to slow down on the final bit. A lot of horizontal velocity actually. Nine mainsails. Tough to hit any particular speed like this, just okay, better recover before it flops. Okay, let me recover it. And how much? Uh, 49,000 funds at 77% of the total value. That's not bad. I Let's take a look at the breakdown here. Um, the procedural liquid tank is now very, very expensive. How much do we get for the, the main sales? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so this accounting is totally off. Look, we've got plus 30,935 funds here. We've got plus 39,083 funds here. So how can this be the amount of funds that we got for recovered parts? Even if we take 77% uh, of this, which I don't think that's how it works. And the part value is so weird. This procedural liquid tanks is part value negative 1,164. I think this actually says plus minus. I think it actually subtracted the the procedural liquid tank out of our funds. I think it actually subtracted this. 
I think it's only a problem with those procedural liquid tanks. The rest of them I think are are normal. Wing connector type D as expected. Yeah, I think it's just the tanks and so we're actually getting less funds back than we should because the tanks are not being counted properly. Okay, well that's a problem, isn't it? Don't know what to do about that. Anyway, let's see if I've got enough RAM space to take care of that second stage. Okay, first of all, let's roll this so that some solar panels are facing the sun. We can get Smart ASS off. Yep, we're going to decouple this second stage and see if we can bring it back down. That's going to be a tough chore, honestly. But let's find out. Okay, here it is. Uncomfortably close to the main mission still. We've got 887 Delta V here. There we go. Much better. Okay, so we've only got 8 hours of battery life, but that's plenty of time for bringing this back down. I guess we might as well, let's see, uh, trajectories, right click toggles trajectories. And then uh, we'll burn at 135 degrees east as usual, retrograde. And then we'll see what kind of descent profile we end up with. The settings have auto update. Okay, yeah. Far, good. All right, that seems all right. Weird way it shrinks though. Can it be updated a little bit quicker than that? Maybe. Okay, well, here we go. Okay, says our impact location is there. Now there. Can you tell I haven't used trajectories much? The only time I tried to use it was with uh, real space shuttle and real solar system and everything. That did not work out very well. But then the uh, space shuttle has quite a lot of interesting aerodynamics to it. Really a periapsis of 16? It's really asking me for quite a lot. Okay, 15 kilometers. Where is our periapsis now anyway? There it is. It is over the peninsula as usual. And now it wants 15 kilometers. Now in our tests, uh, I said between 23 and 24 kilometers with the with the Maximus. That's what we saw. That was without the SRBs though. With the SRBs, it was had more drag, so it was actually would have actually been higher. And we're at 120 kilometer orbit, so that hasn't changed. But now it wants me at a 15 kilometer. I think that's dangerous. But uh, here, that that's that's the landing marker. That's the trajectory. What does complete do? Don't seem to change anything. Okay. Well, if that's what it thinks, that's what it thinks. Let's see if it works. And if I'm doing it wrong, please tell me, obviously. Like I said, haven't used this much before. Oh yeah, I have to pump the fuel down, otherwise we're going to be in trouble. Let's not have it in the top tank. So, uh, uh, it's no longer quite as sure of my landing position. Now again, if I'm doing this wrong, please tell me, but now it expects my my impact point to be here, which is obviously short of the landing marker. Now, if it's the rotation of the planet, then it should account for that. Um, I don't see... As far as angle of attack, we have a direct retrograde angle, so that's not an issue. Not to mention there's no aerodynamics on this thing.
no option seems to mitigate the fact that this is completely off now. Okay, but the question is whether we survive. And that's separate from getting back to the KSC, though. Would have liked that part, too. But I knew the number was supposed to be 23 to 24 minimum. As it is, it'll be lucky if we can reach our home continent at all. Okay, let's see how the bits are. Uh, it's hot. Okay, I think temperature is fine. Now, Ferrum Aerospace gets to decide whether to rip anything off or not. We are not going down as fast as we were with the first stage of the Maximus. This is not quite that crazy a design. The Maximus does seem to have a lot less drag than it probably should, somehow. I wonder if the mainsails are not producing the kind of drag that they ought to. Because, I mean, this thing is producing the right amount of drag, hitting the right speed at this altitude so I can deploy parachutes and everything. The Maximus is crazy heavy, of course, but that's not quite the issue. Okay. Well, we targeted the flag and now it looks like our distance to target is 160.4 kilometers. Okay, looks like we're safely afloat. Recover vessel. Okay. Second stage recovered successfully. Oh, 161 uh, 160.1 kilometers away from KSC, 90.5%. That reads fine. Let's see. Procedural liquid tank? Yeah, minus. Negative. So, we, we end up with deductions for, our, for recovering the liquid tanks. Anyway, we got 19,000 funds back. That's something, at least. Anyway, and we've, we've solved the problem of why the first stage seemed to be incorrectly valued. There's a negative sign somewhere in procedural parts for those procedural tanks. Okay, I'm going to restart the game before trying to continue the mission. So let's do that, because uh, I'm hitting the RAM limit here after recovering both the first and second stages. Alright, so I'll be back with you in a sec. Alright, well I'm feeling pretty good after those successes. So let's fire this stage up. Okay, extend that, those solar panels, because we have those as well. And I've got a plot for Minmus. Okay, well, Minmus periapsis of a thousand kilometers for a start. We have to rendezvous with that station, so... So we're gonna have to see how to approach that, but for now we'll keep it loose. So yeah, this thing has its own independent control, and of course we've got the two Kerbals in the aeroponics module. So the launcher's capacity to orbit, about 123 tons. And that's with it being fully recoverable. Okay, well, clearly a high pass over Minmus, 1,600 kilometers. So we're still relying on this third stage in order to get into orbit around Minmus. I don't want to use the little thrusters for that since they'll be very slow about it. Make sure all our resources are fine. Food, water, oxygen. How many days do these guys have? 671, and that's without recycling active. Let's, well, there's no reason not to get recycling active. Uh, except for time warp. 
Okay. Come on, physics. All right, let's activate the carbon extractor and the water purifier, thereby extending those resources so we don't have to replenish those. Really, we should do that with all our stations. Uh, it's, it's just that those modules are very heavy. They're like five tons apiece. So that's why the other stations didn't get them. Okay, here we go. Now we have to figure out how to rendezvous with our... And look how far off we are. Our existing station. Then the station set as target. Our inclination is way off. We'll let the payload itself bring it into its rendezvous. It should have enough delta V for that. Uh, this stage will still not be quite enough for orbit. But I'll be generous. I'm gonna unlock the reserve fuel. And then we'll have enough. Now one thing we don't have on either payload module is a reaction wheel. No reaction wheels involved. Okay. Well, okay, we'll bring it in a little bit tighter than that. Alright, that's good enough. Keeping it loose. Now, let us separate this portion. It will, of course, return back to... back home on its own. Okay. Our payload ignites. Okay, and let's have it bring itself down. So yeah, this portion, not that portion, this portion, that was the stack separator that we had targeted before, has 961 meters per second, it'll be fine, 21 tons, but let's focus on this for now. We'll bring that back at a later time. Okay, so this has to rendezvous with the station, which is a little bit of a trick now. Okay, here we go. After a couple of joint reinforcement, this is a fine time to start. Ah, this gets SA. Well, actually, pretty much. Yeah, nothing can control the spin unless I activate uh, RCS, I guess. Though they have gimbling, they should be able to stop the spin. Maybe SAS can do something about that. Well, it's not even trying, is it? Okay, 1.1 kilometers is something I can deal with. So we've got that. Oh, the station is pretty small from out here. I guess I'm used to bigger stations. Looks tiny. Oh, this space... T we rendezvoused with the wrong thing. Dang it. We rendezvoused with the space tug instead of the space station. <sighs> Let's take our CS off. All right, one kilometer is fine. Okay, um, right. Wait. This isn't right either. Oh, heck. It's close, but we're still off from the station. Okay, hold on. Crap. Okay, are you the station this time? Come on. Alright, minimum station. Okay, here we go. Okay, well, we're sort of parked. Let's uh, take each one of these in turn then. Yep. Let's have the crude portion first, because 
always more nervous about the crews. Uh, wrong way around, crew portion. Even this portion seems a little bit unbalanced. Here, just point towards the target, please. Hey, the RCS thrust replacement is not good. But I could hardly put these thrusters on this thing. There's no way of doing that. I guess shifting these down a bit would have helped. Wait a second. I want to check whether the other thing has electric charge. It doesn't. It doesn't have electric charge. It can't be controlled. Darn it! Forgot about that. Ah. We'll we'll still dock the crude portion now. I want to get the crew settled in, but uh, we'll get a, we'll detach the space tug. Oh, we'll hmm. We'll see about this, but we have a space tug. We can use the space tug to bring this into dock, and that's what we will do. So again, this docking port is going to be free for a large large carbonite lander. One that won't be drilling. The drilling units will be on location. Someone in the comments suggested that they just remain in place and that's a good idea. Wait a minute, if this inflates will it interfere with that ring? I don't think so, but it's pretty darn close. Well, our distance to target is already closer than our closer, closest approach distance, so I think we're doing well, are we? Uh, well, except for ship manifest. Yes, yes, we we have docked our new crew module, well, aeroponics module, with the station. Uh, let's inflate this and see if it interferes with the ring. No, it does not. Though I would really prefer if we had a counterbalancing module on the other side. And the other module does counterbalance it if it's got fuel. If it doesn't have fuel, it doesn't really counterbalance it. But anyway, uh, water purifier running, carbon extractor running. Um, this does not have its compost. The compost is in the other portion. So it's got its machinery though, very important of course. It's got spare parts and everything. But if I try and activate greenhouse carbon dioxide depleted. Actually, uh, if it comes to that, let's let's uh, deactivate the carbon extractor. No space for more I don't know, biomass full. Well, we have an empty bio... Uh, the other container also has uh, empty space for biomass, so that's okay. So we really need to get that other module here this guy. It's in range of the station, it's just impossible for me to control. So next time we need to get the tug over here to grab this and pull it into the station and dock it up. And then then we'll have our compost there and we'll have space for biomass there. Okay, so that'll be the first plan and then the second plan will be to get the third stage that we have left in this high orbit here. No, that's not it in that high orbit there back to Kerbin. Okay, so that is the plan and so with that I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.